As you can see behind me, we were talking about determining the chemical formula. Now this is a really important thing in chemistry because we want chemical formulas. Think about all our nomenclature. Think about everything we've done with chemical formulas. Now we've been developing uh, the, the approach to this already. So if we just remind ourselves of where we've been and where we're needing to go. We know how to do percent composition by mass. And what that is, it is a mass relationship of elements. So how are they related by mass? How much mass of one element compared to another element is in, is in a compound. And that's great and that's easy for us to do, but of course that doesn't help us with a chemical formula because formulas are about numbers. So our first step today is going to be determining the simplest formula. Now the simplest formula is mostly just a mathematical relationship between the elements and it's it can be nothing more than the mathematical relationship. It's not necessarily the actual chemical formula. It's more like the reduced ratio. So finally today we'll come up with the molecular formula and that is the actual chemical formula. Now for that we'll need more information than what we need for just the simplest formula. But that will be the actual ratio of atoms. Now it's important to note that in some cases the simplest formula is the molecular formula, but we'll need to know that one extra piece of information in order to confirm that. But they are of course related molecular formula and simplest formula. If you take a look at some chemical formulas that you are, have seen perhaps or uh, are familiar with, in some cases the actual formula is the simplest formula. Uh, some very, very common ones like water. But then there's some other ones where the actual formula and the simplest formula are not, although they are related. Think about your old fractions, right? Reducing to lowest terms. That's the simplest formula. In some cases, the formula uh, simplifies a lot. In other cases, it doesn't simplify very much at all. And I want to pay particular attention to this last one because you'll notice that in almost all of the formulas, with the two exceptions, uh, almost all of them have one of one element and two or three or more of the other one. Okay, but the, the, uh, the last one there, iron three oxide, and I guess uh, a couple up above that, where there is not a one of some element. And that doesn't really matter right now, but it will become important uh, when we talk about simplest formula. Now your textbook will call it empirical formula, which is just a big word to mean observed. Uh, I don't use that phrase, but if you come across in the textbook, it means the same thing. The first thing you're going to do is use the simplest, sorry, use the percent composition numbers as masses. And then you're going to use those masses to calculate number of moles, which we know how to do. Then you're going to turn those number of moles into a ratio by dividing by the smallest number. Now that seems a little bit weird, seems kind of hocus pocus maybe, but that's going to work really, really well. You'll have to do a bit of rounding off here, but we want to be careful how much rounding off we do because step four is if it's not easily roundable. And by easily roundable, we mean something chemical rather than mathematical. So forget your math rules about, oh, if it's five and up, or do the rounding. If it's 0.999 and up, okay, go ahead and round. 0 0.0001, okay, you can round that. A little bit closer, okay, but much more than that, no. Step number three should end up with very, very close to whole numbers, or it's going to be number four. Okay, so here's a sample of a question. Uh, pause it to write it down, and then we're just going to roll into it and figure out how we use those steps to determine the molecular, the simplest formula, rather. So I like a table to keep things organized, so the table is going to look something like this. Now, in my table now, I'm going to fill in more information than what you need to do eventually, but you'll have to do all the steps all the time. You won't have to write down the uh, information all the time. So use them as masses. Then I'm going to divide by the molar mass of each one. So I'm going to divide the mass of carbon by the molar mass of carbon. I can divide the mass of nitrogen by the molar mass of nitrogen, and on we go. That's going to give me numbers of moles for each one within that. So now what I have is I have a ratio of moles. Uh, not a very useful one, not whole numbers of moles, but ratios of moles nonetheless. Now I'm going to divide that. So now I'm talking about step three. I'm going to divide each one by the smallest. So I look through my list. Which one is the smallest number of moles? Well, I've got two that are both the same, 1.56. So I divide everything by 1.56. That's going to give me, hopefully, whole numbers of moles. It might not, then I use step four. Okay, so I get whole numbers of moles, three out of four. Not bad. But I can't round off that 2.5 because that's too much rounding. Formulas have whole numbers of moles. Uh, through our math 
calculations and our measurements and stuff, we might end up with small errors, but we won't end up with a 0.5. That's just huge. Okay, so now I have to do something else. This must be a formula where things don't reduce to one of some element. So multiply everything by two in this case, and I end up with the simplest formula of five carbons, eight hydrogens, two nitrogens, two oxygens, and I represent it like a chemical formula. Awesome. I'm going to give you another one. Sorry, I'm going to give you another one after I show you the simplified table. This is the kind of information, this is the kind of table that I would expect to see on most of your answers. Nice and neat, nice and, and clear. Um, I'm not saying what I divided by to get the numbers of moles. I'm not dividing by, writing down what I divided by when I divided by the smallest. I'm just writing down what I got. Too easy. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you this one to try. I'm going to fill in part of the information in a minute. You want to pause it and, and do this for yourself. Okay, hopefully you did. Here's a partial table of what you got, and then here is the final answer of what that simplest formula will be. I'm going to give you a couple more to try. Please pause them, or you don't have to pause it right now, but please work th these things through so you get some practice. Uh, maybe we'll throw one at you first thing uh, next class to see if you did it or not, and then we'll move on to the next step, molecular formula. Okay, molecular formula. This will be the actual you know, the, the actual formula for the final compound. And as I mentioned before, we'll need to have one piece of information that's new to what we just got finished seeing. So make sure you know how to do simplest formula because that's a key component of finding the molecular formula. We know how they're related, but what I want to do is I want to take a bit of a, a look at this particular simplest formula, CH2. That thing does not exist, although you can see how it would come up uh, as a possible simplest formula. The f compounds that I have listed in the molecular formula, however, they do exist. If I took the CH2 and treated it as a building block, a brick, if I had two of those, I would end up with the top one. If I had three of them, I would end up with the second one. If I had, uh, what do I got now, six of those blocks, I would end up with C6H12, and if I had ten, I would end up with the final one. So what I'm saying is each one of these things, each one of these molecular formulas would reduce, mathematically reduce, to the simplest formula. And I could build it from the simplest formula up if I took that block and multiplied it by some number. I also want you to realize that the relationship between the simplest formula block and the total formula uh, let's say I multiply by 6, I would also have 6 times the mass. Now hopefully that makes sense, but that's going to be a key part of what we do. Okay, we already know. That's awesome. If I gave you this question, it has nothing to do with chemistry. You can pause it if you want, but I really want, I want you to do is think about how you would solve this. I've got a big, block, big, uh, big bag of blocks. There's my problem. And I know the mass of each block, and they're all the same thing. Oh, well, I take the total mass of blocks, 98, divided by the mass of each individual block, 2.8, and I figure out how many blocks I have. Too easy. Now, think about this in chemical formula terms. I have the total number of, of uh, total mass of all the blocks put together, and I know how much each block is. Okay, it's going to be the same thing. So, think about this question. If I had a, f a compound where the total formula mass, total molecular mass, was 98 grams per mole, I should have said molar mass, and each simplest formula unit block is 14, how many uh, units do I have? Same thing, total mass divided by the mass of each block, 98 divided by 14, and you probably know your 14 times table, but that comes out to be 7, 7 times 14. Okay, make it a little bit tougher. I have a compound where I've figured out the simplest formula. Hey, I know how to do that. And then I know that the simplest, so the total compound, the final compound, has a mass of 240 grams per mole. What's the molecular formula? Well, I need to do the same thing. Total mass divided by the mass of each block. How big is the block? Well, I've got the formula, so I can figure that out. So the molar mass of the simplest formula, well, that's one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. Add them up, 30. Total mass divided by that new block mass, 240 divided by 30, and I come up with 8. So my simplest formula is the building block. I have 8 of those units to give me the molecular formula. That's all there is to it. 
Here's a typical question. We'll work this one through together so you see in the layout, so you see how all these pieces fit together. And then I'll give you a couple to try. Okay, so you'll notice that I have the information that I've had previous to this, the simplest formula type thing. So for my first bit of information, I have the simplest formula. Now, the only thing I might add differently is I might add a line before that that's just a little story about the compound. But really, the first thing you need to know, the first thing you need to use is this simplest formula, the percentages. Use those percentages to find simplest formula. Using the same table we had before. Okay, now I filled it in. Uh, please make sure you know where all of these numbers came come from. Right? But you take the simplest formula, you take your uh, percent compositions rather, use them as masses, divided by the molar mass of each element. So 70.58 divided by 12, 5.92 divided by 1, 23.50 divided by 16. I get a number of moles, divide by the smallest number one of each, and then I've got whole numbers. If I don't have whole numbers, I multiply by something. There we go. So that's the simplest formula side of it. Now I have the simplest formula. So exactly the same question, just moving it to a different page here. I know the simplest formula. Now I need to do that second step. Use the rest of the information. I know the molar mass of the whole thing, all the pieces put together, and I don't know the mass. I don't know the mass yet, but I know what each piece looks like. So that's the piece. That's the building block. How heavy is that? Well, if you were to figure out four carbons, four hydrogens, one oxygen, comes out to a molar mass of 68. So mass of each block is 68. Remember the bag of blocks? Mass of one block is 68. Mass of the bag of blocks is 204 and change. You'll notice one has got a couple decimals and the other one doesn't. Big picture is not going to make a whole lot of difference, right? You'll, you'll end up with not an exact whole number, but you'll end up with something that's close. So total mass divided by the mass of the blocks and you get roughly three. Now, roughly three because of that 0.23. It just depends on how I figure out the molar mass of one, how we figure out the molar mass of the simplest formula. It'll end up being really, really close. If it's not really, really close, there's a mistake somewhere. One of us made a mistake. You go look in yours, and if it, you can't find it in yours, come to me and I'll see if I can find it in mine. Okay, it happens. That means I'm going to take the simplest formula and multiply it by three. I've got three blocks in my final compound. And a final compound then has the chemical formula C12H12O3. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now I can figure out the exact chemical formula of anything. Okay, I'm going to get you to try this one. Uh, we'll probably grab it in class. If we don't do the simplest formula one, we'll, we'll do this one. Hey, maybe we'll do both. And then we'll figure it out and uh, get a lot more practice. But we'll talk to you in class. See you later.